Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to a brief but very important public service announcement with MarkTech. Right now Apple is rolling out quite a plethora of software updates and I wanted you to inform about all of those starting with some of the lesser important ones like the updates for HomePod that are fixing uh, Siri responsiveness issues. It's labeled as 17.1.1 uh, so in line with the iOS updates we are getting. I know obviously HomePod is not the most important kind of device when it comes to the Apple ecosystem but uh, a lot of you do have HomePod minis and stuff like that so this is quite an important one because obviously Siri is your main method of interacting with the HomePod. Following that, there is a new version for macOS Sonoma, specifically macOS 14.1.1. This coincides with another problem that we have been seeing recently, and that is that some of the M3 MacBook Pro are currently shipping with macOS Ventura, that would be the previous macOS 13 version, while um, obviously you would want it to be on macOS 14 and some kind of version of that. Well, Apple does not specify that this has been fixed this is more a general like software and stability update and also sec some security stuff so I highly recommend you install it and if you have an M3 MacBook Pro please let me know if this fixes the problem for you if you can actually install this version of macOS Sonoma I know for some of you uh, the update has been failing if you try to update from Ventura to Sonoma now let's get to the more important stuff here and that is watchOS 10.1.1 that supposedly fixes the battery drain uh, issue for several Apple watches. Um, now I personally have reported on this issue in one of my prior videos however I have not been able to replicate that kind of issue in any way so I hope that this actually fixes it for you. Um, the release notes from Apple directly are saying this update provides important bug fixes and addresses an issue that could cause the battery to drain more quickly for some users. So um, this very much seems to confirm for one the actual issue existing and now Apple addressing it. Um, if you are somebody who has actually had to deal with that issue please let me know if this is an improvement for you. Sometimes a bug fix does not fix the bug for everyone. I know it sucks but it's important we ha hold Apple accountable for that stuff so they actually keep working, keep fixing issues and we'll get to Apple's quality control, um, let's say ethics a little later on. The next in line is um, iOS 17.1.1 for iPhone. That one fixes a notorious um, snow glitch that uh, when you had the Apple uh, weather widget on your iPhone screen, it was for some reason not displaying snow properly. For some, it also wasn't displaying properly in the app itself. And it also fixes a wireless charging problem, which also seems to be related to another issue that we've talked about however there's not yet full confirmation if that box has been fixed as well let's get into detail what i'm talking about well apple's release notes are stating in rare circumstances apple pay and other nfc features may become unavailable on iphone 15 models after wireless charging in certain cars now this specifically um, refers to some bmw issues that have been reported um, it um, some of those issues were also about the uh, phones potentially like almost overheating or refusing to charge at all or as Apple is saying here that some features had to be re-enabled by basically shutting the phone off or and turning it back on. It's a very inconsistent bug from what I've been reading. A lot of people are reporting on it in very different ways so I'm not sure if Apple has fixed everything um, that obviously refers to it but um, at least they're acknowledging it it and at least they are putting some work to fixing it and as I've said prior uh, the weather lock screen widget may not correctly display snow this seems to be the primary widget as I've referred before some people have also said that uh, it happens in the app itself um, please let me know if that fixes it for you now on iPhone we've also talked about another issue and that is that some iPhones are randomly shutting off at night 
and therefore you have to put in your passcode again um, and all that basically like turning your iPhone on stuff um, when you actually pick it up in the morning. For some people this could also mean that it wouldn't play the alarm when you actually needed it, though for some reason it seemed like the iPhone turned itself usually back on before the alarm had to go off. So Apple does not say whether or not this has anything to do with this wireless charging issue. Um, this one definitely was somewhat car specific, um, but maybe if Apple has fixed some kind of charging issue, maybe it fixes another one. Regardless, um, I would still keep your eye out on that potential issue and definitely report it to Apple if you're actually experiencing random shutoffs at night with your iPhone, because obviously that completely is unacceptable and Apple needs to fix that stuff as uh, fast as possible. At least with like the watchOS update, I've said before, there was a chance that Apple might push that all the way to watchOS 10.2. Thankfully, they've addressed it with watchOS 10.1.1. So there is definitely some pressure that we can apply that forces Apple to react a little more quickly. And when we are talking about Apple bugs and Apple fixing them, well, we also have to look into the future. Um, iOS 18 and macOS 15, obviously we don't know the code name for macOS 15 yet, um, are obviously in development. We have a plethora of features that are being discussed for it, uh, for example, some AI-based stuff. But it seems like uh, the development has come to a small halt right now. Not a bad one, though, because because it seems like Apple is currently pausing the development of new features for iOS 18 uh, and macOS 15, or maybe that also coincides with watchOS 11 and tvOS uh, 18. Um, instead, they're, they're now focusing on bug fixes. Um, as you all know, Apple has not had the greatest track record. I would still put it ahead of Android. I know there are some people who try to say that Android has been more stable over the last couple of years. I completely disagree with that. Just look at the Google Pixel. Um, but Apple definitely has not been quite up to par to what they've been offering back in the iOS 4 or 5 days. Um, so this is coming from Mark Gurman, who is a very, very respectable source in the Apple community. Employees were told about the development pause last week, with engineers asked to focus on fixing flaws and boosting software performance instead. Now, he does not outline whether or not that has anything to do with software performance potentially being really subpar currently at this development stage. Obviously, any kind of like interim alpha version of iOS 18 or macOS 15 could have introduced some issue that might be very easy to solve, um, but it could have also killed performance for some reason. Um, so I don't know if this is specifically fixing like a small problem that like occurred a week uh, or two weeks ago, and now last week they went on to fixing it, or if this has it maybe is a specific problem that has been like piling up for weeks or months in the development process, and now now they're hitting the pause button and saying, okay, no. No new feature development for now, only bug fixes, only software performance boosts. Um, regardless, I think, um, I don't know how long obviously this break will last for them, but in my opinion, it's very likely that similar to how iOS 17 had to push a lot of features into upcoming updates like iOS 17.1 and soon iOS 17.2, I think uh, there is a good chance that iOS 18 might be even more fragmented than that, and we might might be seeing a iOS 18.1.2.3 that aren't just continuous improvements, but primarily exist to add features that will be promised by next year's WWDC. This is just a hunch. I don't know if this will result in some uh, features, like I said, like potential uh, big Siri changes maybe getting pushed as well. Um, but this is the current state of iOS development as we are seeing. Apple obviously is very much interested in having Having stable and performant operating system versions out there, but as you can see, there are always some issues, like Siri responsiveness issues on HomePod, some Macs not being able to install the latest operating system whatsoever. 
Apple Watch is suffering from battery drain issues and iPhones not being able to work properly um, on certain wireless charging jar chargers in specific cars, not properly displaying certain widgets and more. This obviously is just an add-on to the uh, myriad of discussions that we've already had this year. So like, of course, the infamous iOS 17 overheating disaster. I know disaster is a strong word, but it kind of overshadowed the release of the A17 Pro chip, where people were really inclined to believe that it's like a terrible processor, super power hungry. The iPhone has terrible cooling system that is completely incapable of containing it. Um, I think the software fix mostly mostly overcame those kinds of concerns but it definitely wasn't pr that apple wanted to have so now i'm really looking forward to ios 18 mac os 15 and apple's other software updates next year hopefully with higher quality control than this year a lot of hardware seems to be coming in rather hot with the new software um, and some software obviously has been quite broken regardless of hardware so let's hope that this will not be happening next year please let me know if these um, releases actually fix any kind of issues for you um, or if you actually have any of those issues please report them to apple please let me know so that i can keep covering them um, Regardless of all of that, um, I think we obviously still are here mostly fans of Apple technology. This channel is now 18,000 people strong. It's incredible. Just this Saturday, we celebrated 10,000 subscribers. Um, I wanted to give a big, big thank you to not just all the amazing people from India and Indonesia, uh, the United States, Canada, um, UK, Germany, all the countries that usually um, counted for most of my subscribers but also now Egypt, Bangladesh, Pakistan, Nepal. So, um, and if I butchered any of the country's pronunciations, this is not a sign of disrespect. I'm a dirty Westerner for now, but I immensely appreciate your support. Let me know where you're coming from. Let me know what you would like to see me cover next. Let me know what you would like to see me change about this channel, because as I said, as the channel grows, as also the revenue income from this channel grows, um, I will consider changing some stuff for now i'm really happy with how it's going i hope you are happy as well um, i kind of hope that you wouldn't have joined if you weren't enjoying the content um, so thank you so so much um, please if you are watching this and you haven't yet subscribed subscribe like share comment um, if you want to support me directly you can find the patreon link in the description of this channel uh, please hit the notification bell because a lot of the content on this channel is actually live stream content and if you subscribe maybe coming from a regular video like this you might have no idea that this is a primarily live stream focused channel and you might not be able to catch me live without hitting the notification bell and if you hit me actually up live or during a live stream uh, please consider sending a super chat or a super sticker if you want to support me directly or once a video is already live you can send a super thanks regardless of all of that it's an incredible journey i'm absolutely absolutely flabbergasted by the success of this channel i hope i can live up to your expectations and i hope you let me know whenever i don't similar to how apple didn't live up to our expectations prior to those uh bug fixes and we'll keep holding them accountable i'll see you guys next time this is smart tech tuning out